The Breatharians extract salts from the air and claim to eat nothing. They are campaigning to cure world hunger by such extreme strategies. One in St. James's Church in Piccadilly gave a talk. She seemed translucent. You could almost see the altar through her body while she lectured you. She was impassioned. If no one eats, no one needs starve. Just live off smells. Then famine won't matter. She urged a food-free lifestyle. Some were taken in. But Peter Bayliss caught her squirrelling hobnobs, saw her nibble them. Dunking them in tea in the vestry, what's left for us to believe in? Peter famously followed each spiritual craze. He was gutted. She promised to make hunger history, followed by poverty, then celebrity. She was going to make that history too. I'd singled her out as the new messiah. Only this time, a woman. Oh, my giddy aunt. Now we've flushed her out. Do you fancy tea at Fortnum's to fill the aching void? Delicious muffins, essential in one's quest for the secret of life. He led the way there. We found an empty table and sat down for tea. It's the Queen's grocer. I come here to imagine paradise on earth. We discussed events. Have I told you, dear fellow? Everyone, in fact, is crucially flawed. A huge character failing. A horrid blemish. A San Andreas fault line of the soul. Well, go on, go on. Ask me what it is. Uh, oh, what is it, Peter? That's better, dear heart. I'll keep my voice down. They think their hypocrisy is sexy. That's it. Can you possibly credit man's perversity? So I see my role from this moment on, due to Breatharianism, to disavouch them. To tell them they're wrong. He licks his lips. What a sweet epiphany. All thanks to Hobnobs. Ex parvis saepe magnarum mementa rerum pendant. Things of consequence will often spring out at you from trifling matters. And in this case, mark this. It's been just a few crumbs from an oaty biscuit. In a forlorn room, with piles of dusty hassocks, that drew back the veil, that opened the doors of perception of heaven and hell, charging us with exposing false prophets. Now take off your shoes. Let's attune our feet to enlightenment. Let's plant them all on the road towards Damascus. A revelation is at hand. Can you feel it? The hobnobs a sign. We've been singled out to receive certain signals. Looking up, Yes, cucumber, please. Ah, deliverance. I always feel light-headed when I say goodbye to one charlatan before seeking out the next. Fortune cookies, please. We don't have them, sir. What? We need their instructions to know what to do. We've come specially to this classy oasis to find great insights, learn how the other half lives, as well as sampling Her Majesty's crop. Fortune cookies, please. I said, we don't have them, sir. Darkly, that's your misfortune. Stage whisper, turning back. We're being watched. Can you see the manager? See him signalling. Oh dear, drink your tea. The men in white are en route. Last time I was here, I levitated. Well, more like yogic flying. Then I smashed some cups and tried some streaking. We may have to find somewhere a bit more spiritual. But hush, steady on, not before I've had my say on the state of things. Saints who let you down. Take Geldof, why not? Is a case in point. Let's stage a concert for Africa, but with no African players. A hundred thousand is Bob's lecture fee to talk on world poverty. Lives in three flash pads, ones hidden behind huge walls, cutting off a wood. 
with his properties all registered abroad in the Virgin Islands. Feed the world, and feed bank balances too. Hypocrisy rules. What do you think he's worth? Well, it's now 30 million. Sir Bob's Wonga pile. Princess Diana left millions to millionaires. Quite forgot the poor. Bono, of you too? Campaigner for debt relief? How's his sainthood look? Hollow as a polo, with his mint in tax havens, not in Ireland, and his shares in Forbes, the house mag for billionaires. Yes, you too, Bono. Is anything worse than people peddling street cred to line their pockets? Comfortably dumb. Capitalists aren't unique. Karl Marx would gamble on the stock exchange, sent his girls to finishing school, finished them off. They both killed themselves. Both, Eleanor and Laura, both were suicides. Karl Marx, did you know, the man lived off heiresses. And Frederick Engels, he liked fox hunting and owned a factory with a child labour force. When Marx was dying, his housekeeper asked him what he might have to say for posterity. Very angrily, Karl Marx threw a slipper at her. And then Marx shouted, Go away! Get out! Last words are for fools who've not said enough. So, this was Marx's last action. Nasty bit of work. But how prophetic. That fuck off plus violence was Marx's last message. Mother Teresa cultivated unsavoury murderous dictators and sold skeletons of Calcutta's poor in bulk for fertiliser. Some people who help people prefer it if they're kept helpless and poor, whilst their own sainthood gives them opportunities for helping themselves. HRH, Prince Charles, spends a thousand an hour on his private jet, emitting six tonnes of CO2 to lecture Copenhagen about climate change. Michael Moore's new film, Capitalism, backed by Goldman Sachs, made with non-union labour, has the fitting subtitle of A Love Story. Now Lady Gaga comes up with wristbands to sell for Japan. Nuclear earthquakes, sure all my fans will help out. And the cash goes where? Not Fukushima. So Gaga sued for millions. Celebrity fraud. Dishonest hoarders who pretend to be generous as a wretched tax dodge. What an endless stream crawling out of the woodwork. No one cottons on. Millionaire Cameron and millionaire Osborne say, We suffer with you. We can feel your pain. We're all in this together. Rich busybodies, whose inherited wealth cheats the poor of the perks they're heir to as well. The Sunday Times rich list is the hypocrite spotter's Bible. Watch the billionaires displaying their wealth but also boasting how much they're giving away. <laughs> Bill Gates gives billions to charity, but sadly, the charity is his. He gives it all to his own tax-exempt outfit, the Bill Gates Foundation. Watch the rich blindside us with all their cocktail party philanthropic toss. So tell me why, pray, they're in this list every year, growing richer still to keep their money their donations are painless it is all hot air eat the rich they'd be a complete disappointment and cause flatulence yes we're leaving now do you sell hobnobs by the way no to down market but you'll waive the bill how good to know there's no charge for the secret of life then we're thrown out, with Peter Bayliss barking at security. Then at passers-by. Buy stale fog in crested jars, free to the starving. Tiring of the pong of plutocratic tax dodgers, such as the owners, of course, of Fortnum and Mason itself, we left Piccadilly, West One. The royal grocer would later be occupied by UK uncut, as if the bailiff's mischief might still be working.
from beyond the grave. With the building trashed, its staircase and floors all strewn with broken biscuits. Bono had the nerve to sing Blake's Jerusalem at Glastonbury, while his bodyguards beat up the protesters who'd come to show him up. The Breatharians' bad breath can get everywhere, stifling the truth. But hypocrisy doesn't stay sexy for long. It can't escape disgust. However much some celebrity's fragrance tries to disguise it.